Well, we are halfway through the season already, and tonight we're going to see some exciting racing. It is the Filthy Mechanic Clothing Company night here at the Millbridge Speedway, as always, in Salisbury, North Carolina. Let's go down and talk to Aaron Hodges. Oh, look at the Carroll Tractor and Trailer Pair Bush Series points, and Aaron Hodges is second in points. Aaron, you and um, Kidwell are starting to have this little battle for this championship, and it seems like you guys have semi-broken away from the pack. Um, there's nights you have really good nights. There's nights he has really good nights. There's ringers in there that race real hard. I mean, what do you got to do to win this championship? Obviously win and run well, but what is it going to take for you as a one-man band to beat him? Well, first off, I got to thank Caleb Clinnard. He keeps me uh, hooked up uh, every week. But uh, we started off with this 94 Stalker, and it's uh, it was pretty rough to start out with. But uh, we've, we've kind of got it pointed in the right direction. We still have a little bit to learn on it. Uh, so, but he's hit on the tires pretty good the last couple weeks, especially last week or the last race. And uh, we just gotta we just gotta keep our nose clean, really, just to stay out of trouble. That's the biggest that's the biggest deal. Yeah, it seems like the biggest hurdle to to jump over is people beating the shit out of each other in this series. Number one, number two, it's all tires. So it seems like it's your chassis can be kind of pretty much whatever you got as long as you're in the ballpark, and the tire game really makes. It. Yeah, like I said, Caleb has been been on point uh, here lately, but uh, I mean, hell, I, he makes up for what I what I leave out there because I ain't no wheel man by no means. But uh, yeah, me and Kidwell, uh, we had a little little bump up there last week, but I think we got it figured out. We, I thought we raced pretty clean, pretty clean, 99% of the race. So hopefully, me and him can battle out till the end and uh, and uh, see who comes out on top. Talk about the contact with a teammate car last race. That's, how was that meeting after? I, I asked him if why was he going to go to the top and then the last second come down to the bottom. I was just joking with him. Yeah, I, uh, I got in there a little hot. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, and he, he knows it. We're all good, though. We, we got to figure it out. That's my fault. <laughs> Aaron Hodges chasing a championship. Going to minimize mistakes here tonight. Thanks, Adam. All right, Jay-Z, let's go to the tech cart. And tonight we're going to talk about a very good tuning tool, and it's camber. Camber is something you can touch at every single track you go to, uh, no matter what type of dirt it is. Uh, the angle of the tire, how much it tilts in towards the chassis on the top, uh, impacts the contact pack to the tire. It helps that cart cut uh, in the corner. Too much, too little, keep adjusting. Find that sweet spot for camber to help drive that roll speed. And then when you adjust camber, you have to adjust your toe as well. Don't forget that. Let's go down and talk to Chris Quinn, who will never adjust his toe after he changes. Well, it's Filthy Mechanic Clothing Company tonight, and Chris Quinn, you're one of those guys that races in that series and in the Dash Series as well, Finish Line Wash Pros Dash Series. Um, you started with us last year, you started running consistently, been making features. Uh, how much fun are you having in this series, and what has it been like from your uh, standpoint? I've been having a blast. Um, I've just been doing some backyard racing really up till last year, and Eric and Brandon Connor said, hey, grab your, grab your backyard cart. And, I've just been having a blast. So I upgraded from the backyard cart. This is actually the cart uh, Brandon Connard won the Hoosier Nationals with last year. I bought it, and I've changed everything but the motor. That's the same motor I started off with last year. So I'm um, just trying to get better. I'm not a driver, never drove, and just coming out here, hanging out with my buddies and having a good time. Explain how hard it is to people at home, because they don't, they don't understand. They think, okay, you get in a go-kart, you race it, it's wide open. I mean, how, how hard is it to actually run well in this series? Uh, it's very hard. When you got professional late model drivers, sprint car drivers, I know you got some NASCAR drivers in some series, and someone like me, I mean, it's just a learning experience. It's so hard. These boys are so good. Um, really, you just got to sometimes pull your balls up and get up, get against the wall and let her let her eat. So uh, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's definitely tough for newbie, but I'm, I'm trying to learn as I go and make a little progress and want to be able to get maybe top fives consistently here soon. Who do you want to thank for this ride? I mean, you, you do such a good job with your uh, the appearance of this thing. It's really good. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to thank JS Racing and uh, Brandon Connor, Eric Riggins. They kind of stepped me in the right direction. Um, my my own company, Bowtie Limousine. So um, profits kind of going this, just my play money. But I have a good time, and I appreciate y'all putting on a good series and letting us come out here about once a month and have some fun. Chris Quinn enjoying his time in the DNQ series. Hopefully enjoying his time tonight after the feature in the Filthy Mechanic Pro Cup Series. Thanks, Chris. Always good to talk to Chris Quinn. Well, uh, looks like the track workers are having fun trying to get off the racetrack. Very slippery there, Bill. Yeah, it's usually when you get off, it is very slippery. So no surprises in turn four, Bob. Let's go down and talk to Zach Campolonia. 
Well, a driver that has really been improving and has better his equipment, his driving, his carts, is Zach Campolonia. Zach led a bunch of laps in the Dash Series race last last month. And, I mean, man, your technical alliance with Robert Showalter is really helping you out. Is that the key to what's been making everything go better? Yeah, for sure. Rob's been helping me about a bunch, uh, him and Welch. Uh, they've kind of shown me everything to run good in these series. So hopefully uh, with these good runs, just get a solid top three finish here soon and uh, should be pretty good tonight. What's it like? I mean, we, we have top, we have bottom, we have all these different grooves. When you show up, do you show up, hey, I'm going to sell out for the top, I'm going to run the bottom, or do you just come here and figure it out? Before, I used to second-guess myself, and that's what I think was tripping me up. But last race and the race before, I kind of had a mindset of what I was going to race, and I did good. So did the same thing tonight, and hopefully uh, run the bottom will uh, be the lane to go. Has, has running as well as you have over the last couple of races just boosts your confidence and makes everything easier for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I didn't. I never grown up dirt racing, so it took me last year to really get the hang of it, and this year with the treaded tires. So uh, just every race just get, builds my confidence and my experience. Zach Campolonia, he's got the right people, the right equipment, all the things that he needs to win these races, and it's a matter of time before it happens. Well, starting in 2022, we are getting rid of the last prep series in DNQ. The Bush Series will still be around, but it will go to the Hooters Pro Cup rule set. And, man, we are going to have one heck of a run towards a national championship at the end of the year. It's the DNQ National Championship War, Bush versus Pro Cup. Jay-Z, I'm extremely excited to watch this next year. Yeah, this is going to add a whole new level of pressure uh, to the DNQ Series. This war is going to force drivers to pick and choose where they want to race and dedicate their time and make sure they hit all of those races to qualify for that big championship at the end. Yeah, the championship is what everybody races for to begin with, but instead of having to run a whole year, now you've only got three chances to give it all you've got. You can't win a couple of races in the beginning of the year and then lose your way and still expect to win the championship. You gotta be on your A game all year to even qualify, and then you got Three shots where the best from Pro Cup and the best from the Bush Series combine and go head to head for that all elusive inaugural title. Yeah, the national championship, the last three races of the year. What people tend to forget, the last three races of the year are the road course, the fair, and Millbridge Speedway. So this is a whole nother set of uh, <laughs> circumstances for these guys. Plus the fact that we're gonna have two separate series running head to head every night. We're not going to know who's better than who until the last part of the year, Jay-Z. Yeah, it'll give different people a chance to shine. It'll, it'll make you bring your A game. Will we see some young guns like maybe a Millington uh, up front winning uh, the, the road course to get out in front? Or, or will some of the old guard and tried and true competitors be the ones that uh, stay out front? You know, Bill, there's, there's a lot that can happen. <laughs> yeah, there really is. And the fair race especially. Anything can happen there. We see tempers fly at People get shit canned, we've seen chassis bent, and that's after the intercourse. The intercourse, we've had a different winner every single time. Nobody can get a hold of that racetrack. And so the guys that have been winning all year could easily mess it up in those two races and come down to that last shot at the Millbridge Oval for all the money. All the warm beer guys who are not in the top 10 in points at the end of the season in Bush or Pro Cup can run for the ARCA championship as long as they have run five of seven races and if you run all the races you get in you put your name in a hat for a three set of tires at the end of the year that is going to be something to watch next year pretty excited about it we'll have more details as time goes on but let's head into the Cup Series feature the skate pool cleaning Cup Series starting lineup Nick Stroop We'll start on the pole after the invert. Robert Showalter on the outside pole. Row number two, the bad kitty Adam Welch and Mike Crotch. <laughs> Row three, uh, Mickey Roop and Zach Campolonia. Mark Ellis, who had a second place finish in his debut, is in the next row with CJ Winslow. Row number six, cross ride Craig Smith and Curtis Markham. And the fan boat, Steve Broy. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. We changed the uh, logo or the the information for you there, Bill. There it is. Yeah, that's good, finally. <laughs> that's the right way to Yeah, it. we're like three quarters of the way through My, the season. We finally got the right rules up. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Rott has an in-car camera for tonight. So, Cup Series change of rule 1263 plus. So, you're going to see these guys 
Mostly run the bottom to middle as a green flag is out. Stroop leads him to the line, but it is a big safety issue. And uh, it didn't seem like the top was coming in tonight anyway. So these guys are running the bottom. Yeah, track looks a little bit slick there as we see Bobby Showtime jumping left rears to begin with. He falls back in the line in second, loses a bunch of momentum. But look at how much slower these cars are on the bottom than what we're used to seeing all the way up banging the boards. Yeah, when you're riding up high there, you, you need that grip to get the hammer down and get that run down the front straightaway. If, if there's no grip out there, period, you're just sliding around, throttling, and you're pedaling the throttle, might as well run the bottom and make the track smaller. As, uh, look at that C.J. Winslow trying to make a, a move on the underside there of uh, like Ellis. Yeah, and well, last time we ran this bottom, uh, if you guys remember, Adam Welsh led like every lap, was the fastest car here tonight, and he got the pole for this race. Now he's all the way up to second, made a pass on Showtime. Do we see him run down Stroop here? Is there three wide getting into one? I don't know. Ooh, we got one around. Mark Ellis goes for a spin off the nose of Mickey Roop. Yeah. Ring out the caution. Yeah, Mickey Roop being a bulldozer already. We've seen him bounce off a couple of guys. That body is a little worse for wear halfway through the season. Might have to do a little bit of work, but Bobby Showtime doing his best Riley Herbst impression going from the front to the back. He's having some trouble here running the bottom. We may have more contact. I believe that's Steven Broy uh, getting sideways. Look at the top three. So you've got Nick Stroop, you've got two, three of the Showalter guys, and then you've got a Team Reaper racer there with Mike Rott. Are we seeing like a lot of team racers be creating dominant forces as we're on board with Mike Rott? It seems like the guys who have multiple carts and buddies learn a lot more than the single car teams. Yeah, I think that's true in any big race and series as we see Showtime feed a right rear down the uh, front stretch. We see that in a lot of race and series where you get some super teams, if you will, and DNQ is no exception to that. The more data you have, the more things you can try and the faster you can learn as uh, Zach Campolonia <laughs> Gives a right side nerf bar. Yeah, they'll, they'll be sharing side panels before long. It's going to be running out the, rate, the way this race is going. But, you know, Bill, more than just data, uh, tires are huge here. And I know we're not prepping the treads, but you still want tires sized differently, right? You're still playing with stagger. So if you got four or five drivers and everybody chips in to buy two or three sets, you got a ton of sets to play around with. And with no prep, you can swap the tires from cart to cart to cart. And if one set's working that night um, in all the different classes, have your guys running up front with a, the right set of tires for the evening. So uh, the big teams, you know, Reaper, Showalter, all that stuff, it, it pays off. It pays dividends. Yeah, watching Nick Stroop right now, he was full-blown junk in practice. I mean, he was fourth, not very fast, got the pull through the invert. But whatever changes him and his dad made on this thing, Big Mike, it's flying right now. Jay-Z, one thing I want to go back to is the different tire sets within the big teams. What if in a team like that, you have one set of tires that's really just working, but you got three guys racing in that class? Who gets the good set? I think it goes by the, the stat sheet for the season, right? If, if some guy's been running, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth as a caution's out here all season. Um, the mandatory season. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we got to find him a sponsor so we can make the caution uh, sponsor him as well. You know what I mean? How about this yellow is brought to you by Stephen Roy and Chuck's Hot Dogs over the holidays, you know? <laughs> they, they have a landscaping company. Maybe we should just plug that uh, one. Hey, throw him a bone. He gets Here a lot of TV time. Adam Wells going to steal the lead away from Nick Stroop with Showalter to the inside of Stroop there on that race. Bad Kitty makes way. Showalter back to the front. We've seen this many times throughout the year. Wait until the end as he gets put three wide. Stroop and Bad Kitty both put him out to drive. Now Stroop takes the lead back. It seems like you really got to pitch oh. the cart. Oh, as a whole. They touch. It's a hornet's nest. Showalter gets left reared. Ellis to the inside. He chops across the nose. Yeah, it is definitely a slam fest. There is Ellis just muscling around Showalter. OJ Simpson <laughs> slapping that thing around. <laughs> Showalter can't get to the back fast enough. You know, in big time auto racing, you're never allowed to wreck your teammate. It looks like those rules don't apply here in the DNQ series. You wreck whoever the hell you want to wreck. As <laughs> Showalter feeds a right front to a. Uh, Ryan Ellis, with his, who had his best career finish in his first race a few weeks back. C.J. Winslow needs a little bit of wedge <laughs> in that thing. 
It's Mark Ellis, but yeah, we know what you mean, Ryan. Right, Evans. <laughs> Joe Racer. Man, I'm Jay Z. I'm starting to see these guys get a little free off the corner. I mean, did they they put some stagger in it to turn here on the bottom side of the track? Is that something you think they play it, around with? Is Ron Boer Rock watching this? It could be. Battle? They'll they'll want to take some camber, um, you know, put some negative camber in that left front to keep it from transferring so hard because there's no grip out there. They want to throw some you know right side weight or get some more weight on that right rear statically. So uh, you know they might be just pitching it in that corner there, trying to to get that right rear to stick. It's a uh, it's tough sledding out there, man. They're they're all in yaw for sure. They're driving it, uh, Bill. I mean, I watch them off the corner here. They're turning right, so that's it's good to see. They are. The best drivers are coming out to play here in the DNQ series, and uh, some of the not-so-good ones as well as Mark Ellis goes back to the inside. I don't know who the hell's in that yellow car. I don't really care. He's running about fifth. It's rough, right? Not really making a name for <laughs> himself. <laughs> Mike Rott, yeah. yeah. Mike Rott. But uh, it's not stopping Stroop, who has totally checked out. Now, we have that five-to-go caution coming up, Jay-Z, which is – Probably one of the best things in DNQ, which is, you know, racing entertainment. That's why we throw a five to go caution. And there it is. So so now it's a little bit of craftiness here in this uh, finish of the race. Yeah, I'm taking the inside if I had the choice. Well, you got the choice, Jay Z. Right. There you go. Look at that. Nick Stroop. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Shit can Zach Camp along to Mark Ellis looks like a hero coming on the inside. Man, it seemed like he tried to do the high cut down crossover, which usually works on the guy in the lead. Look at these guys three wide in the back of the pack for third. With three wide trying to get on the podium, but here comes bulldozer Mickey Roop trying to make his way through there. Can't quite get it done, but he turns. Oh, that's oh, that sucks for Zach. On Zach Campolonia, who was going to be on the podium until that restart, but that is why we race the race, and that's why DNQ throws that five to go caution for all of this action for our fans. Not effing lifting. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll try it again. Single file restart going to be a green white checkered here. Since we've done our three restarts, Stroop is the leader as we go green. Stroop guarding that line, but doesn't quite do uh, it. That is a move that works all the time. That go high cut underneath the leader move with the big arc works every time. You just cannot finish that move. No, Bad Kitty with the classic choke. He's not going to be able to get it done. It doesn't look like Zach Stroop. Really, he's had the lead this whole race, but Bad Kitty under fire from Bobby Showtime, who's beat the nose off that thing. White flag is out for Stroop, who's having the best season he's had since last season at the end of the year. He is going to come off of turn four and take home the win in the escape pool cleaning feature. Down here in victory lane with Nick Stroop on filthy mechanic clothing night. Cup race, man, you and Adam Welch had a good battle, especially on that restart. He was able to fend them off, and I think you led all 30 there. Yeah, the cart did a uh, complete 180 after qualifying. Uh, we were about junk. I changed everything on it, and uh, it came to life, to say the least. Um, I know he was going to do everything he had to on that restart. I would have, and uh, I'm just thankful he didn't door slam me or anything because I'm not going to say I'm, I'm owed one, but after last race, uh, I kind of expected it, to say the least. Um, but this thing was on a rail. I think Phantom Racing Chassis, this guy, man, it's – it's unreal on these tires, um, KSR motors. My wife for letting me race out here uh, more than, I guess, a lot of fired racing here lately. So uh, I'm a guy, I think my brother, he's out here. My dad, he helps me out a ton. Chris Mosley, old Smith here, at SRI. Um, man, this thing's a lot of fun to race. He started out in developmental with an open wheel modified. Now he's in the biggest dirt racing spectacle of all North Carolina DNQ Cup Series. Your winner, Nick Stroop in the 45. Adam Welch ended up second in the main event. Almost had first, but they thought you were jumping pretty good there on that restart. I mean, they give you one, so you got to try, right? Uh, <laughs> if it worked, it would have been great, but they called it back, and that's fine. Um, I raced them as clean as I could and made sure there was no issues down the road. Um, I want to try to win the points, but guy winning the races every week, and I'm finishing second, fourth, ain't going to work out, so we got to go back to work. and. We just weren't good enough tonight. You got to go back to work. It sounds like you ain't working hard enough. Is that the real question, or is it work or driving? There's a really good chance that tonight we overworked <laughs> and I over-adjusted from qualifying. You know, you go out there and get the pole, and you can't even handle candle, hold a candlestick to the winner. So I went the wrong way. I should have went the other way, and it is what it is.
He says it's work. I think it's kind of driver. Adam Welch ends up second here in the 71 W. <laughs> Robert Showalter third. He was up the front, then you went to the back, to the front, to the back. He was in one of them Cracker Barrel rocking chairs there for almost the whole race going back and forth. Yeah, we, uh, we, <clears throat> we had to fight most of the time on the restarts with the, uh, the two guys that were behind me. And that just, uh, it killed me to let these two guys get too far ahead out in front of me to uh, try to do anything with them. So uh, we ran good, but uh, I don't know. They, they drove me a little rough, and I drove them a little rough back. So it is what it is. We'll uh, go to the next race and see what we can do. Well, you stayed on the bottom the whole time. That's kind of a new rule. I think you're still getting used to being on this bottom. Um, I think the bottom race was good. We actually tried to uh, do a lot of passes. We, you know, we used each other up a little bit, and it's a lot more down there you can do than you can do up top. I mean, once you get up top, you're pretty much just uh, riding in line until someone screws up in front of you and uh, get past them that way. You can't really just drive into the side of them when you're running up top like that. You'll kill somebody, you know. So um, bottom's fun. It's different. Uh, car was good. Just uh, tough luck on the restarts, that's all. Robert Showalter, third here in the cup, so that's the bronze medal. All right, Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Series starting lineup. Justin Bogar on the SRI pole with Thomas Markham on the outside pole. Good qualifying. Row number two, Aaron Hodges and Billy Furr. Row three, Cole Wagoner and Dylan Ratchet Jaws Teasley. And Anthony Kidwell will round out the Bush Series field for tonight. Here is your Bush Series information, 390 stock predator, Max's pink, blue, blah, 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 blah. These guys will go to Pro Cup rules next year. If you don't show up, we will not run your shit. So, uh, and, and that will show you by the points that these guys aren't showing up. So uh, here you go. Here's the points after five races. <laughs> Brown, I'll show up here and there. Back to even race, bro. <laughs> Connor, no chance. Yeah, what happened to Connor, man? He was hot to trot for a few races at the end of last year. Now he's just not showing up, man. Is he, is he, uh, you know, going to like a lower class tier, like a big car or something like that? Got caught cheating. Uh, he, they had to go to Eldora for the dream. Oh yeah. So a lot of guys are not here for the. They were at Eldora for the dream, which is uh. Part of racing, green flag is out for this beautiful seven cart field where we are almost wasting our time running this and making a video for it. But here we go, Justin Boger leading. This is just enough carts to make a video. You know, I can tell you what, a lot of guys might have went up to uh, Ohio for the dream and they might have won 100 grand, but they didn't get a warm case of bush ice. So fuck them. Right, they're stupid, <laughs> they're paying for their beer. What else beer. are you gonna get? Yeah, they had to pay for their yeah. beer. <laughs> So, this series next year, like we talked about earlier, treaded tires, same rules as Pro Cup. What I'm really excited for next year is to see who chooses what series to run in. So, if you get all the good guys saying, I'm going to run Pro Cup, as Justin Boger leads with Aaron Hodges in second, then you might get some of these guys say, I'm going to buy a set of treaded tires and run Bush. And before you know it, Justin Boger becomes a household name. He makes it in the top 10 in points. And he wins the Bush Series championship. Then he's going to go run for the national championship, probably run 15th, but at least he won a championship. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of strategy involved next year because, you know, you're, you might have to make some deals up front. We might have to see some, well, I don't know, somebody stopped on the back stretch. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We go green again. Thomas Markham having the best run of his life. He takes the lead for a minute. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like these guys are going to have to have, oh, we got some action finally. The guy who spun out. Makes a move towards the back. Not going to be on the podium, but uh, moves his way up into fourth. Um, Wagner. Yeah, these guys, they're going to have some choices to make next year because, you know, if you get all of your Bobby Showtimes and Stroop brothers and Riggins brothers all racing the same, the same race or the same series, you know, that opens it up for some of these guys. All they got to do is just show up to every single race. That alone gets you uh in the hat for a set of tires uh, but if you win the championship in this series not only do you get that prestige you know you're automatically in to the championship series the national uh championship war between the two series so you know maybe some of the top guys want to come down here and run or i should say across here and run you know maybe all the top guys want to race each other to keep their sword sharp but uh there's definitely going to be a lot of strategy in what series you're going to run and a lot of shit-talking between the two series. 
going back to the big teams, Bill, I, I wonder if this is the situation where a Team Reaper or a Showtime Motorsports says, listen, guys, you two are running uh, Pro Cup. You two are running uh, Bush to try to split the resources between the two series so they have everyone and the whole team has a shot of making the show. You know, you don't want to be that guy that bumps your teammate out, so they want to spread it around so everyone has an equal chance. I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to come into play and there will be some very uh, anxious group chats going on towards the end of the season here. Yeah, which, which series has the better stacked field? Which series do we feel like, the, is this guy winning all these races going to beat this guy winning these races? Are they going to talk some shit about each other? When the two collide and the war starts with those two series, what is it going to look like? I mean, you're going to have the 10 best out of each series. And what is the ARCA championship going to look like? I mean, you're going to have some massive peasants racing for that ARCA championship. Yeah, I would love to see Jonathan maybe get a championship. I mean, maybe... Um John Kinder can get a championship. I mean, he hasn't seen the podium in years. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the ARCA championship, man, that's going to get rowdy. I, I'm really excited to watch that. There are five to go caution. Yeah, and points reset in those last three races. So even if you win the championship in one of these series, you're set back to zero. So you could see a guy who is 10th in points. Is Thomas Markham making the move with five to go? On Justin Boger, can he hang on? Boger holding strong on the inside, gets some good bite there, but Markham comes back with some momentum. He's in that ultra black groove, just barely misses it, but he's hanging tough, trying to side draft, put that air on the spoiler. Can't quite pull Boger back, but now uh, he's <laughs> Markham is in a compromising spot. Yeah, wild Bill Fur there in the fourth position, racing with Wagner as we have two to go. Yeah, it's, it's tough. You you can't, there's a lot of angel dust building up in that second groove, so it's it's tough to make way. You've got to be in the bottom. Um, as we've got a good race going on here for second, Bogert's er, running away with it here. <laughs> Who is that? I think they thought that was a checkered flag. He gets turned around. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Hodges spins, Boger wins. Whatever. Let's go down and Whatever. talk to our winner. Get a bath, folks. Climbing out of the cart, Justin Boger, a.k.a. the Booger. Well, that's probably the first shower you've taken almost a week, ain't it? Yeah, at least. <laughs> so talk about that whole race there. He was up front. The 19 Hodges, that had, first question, what was going to happen if he got outrun by a 25-year-old cart? <laughs> well... I'd have been a little disappointed to say the least, but uh, I really appreciate him, uh, you know, helping me out, you know, pushing me on those restarts and everything. You know, we're, we're somewhat team teammates, I guess, you know. Uh, I got to thank Caleb Kleiner for doing tires, you know. That's definitely what won this race was the tires for sure. And uh, and uh, and Randall Beck for, for letting me drive his cart. So it was a lot of fun. I about to say, Caleb Kennard doing the tires for you. That's the ginger Kurt Shelmerdine over there. It's hard to beat the crew chief and wrenching on that with him on behind you. That's for sure. All right, Justin Booger down here in Victory Lane in the triple eight. Thomas Markham second, the aerodynamically challenged cart. Goodness, aerodynamics is not up to your standards here, but you got second place. A little bump in the rub and calls that. That's my, about what you had to do to get second, wasn't it? Well, it was. Uh, restarts there were great. Uh, great racing. Uh, outside line was there, at least for me. Uh, but, yeah, it's not always the prettiest cart that does the best. So, just here to have fun. You tried that outside a little bit. Did you ever actually think it was going to work, or was you just trying anything? Well, I was just trying anything at that point. I didn't have anything for the leader, so figured might as well try on the restart to see what I can get. Ladies and gentlemen, second place, he has the Rainbow Warrior stash. Maybe we're in victory lane. We might can upgrade you to an Earnhardt stash. Markham ends up second place. Fur here in third place. You had a good bit of fur, but not enough gur as you're right here in third place. That's right. We just missed it on the tires a little bit, but I had a good time out here tonight. I was about to say, you getting outrun by the Rainbow Warrior in a cart that's prepped by the Ginger Kirk Shelmer Dean, it's not hard. It's pretty good to get run third place here. No, uh, well. I've, I've always run good on this track. I used to run Friday nights, and, and we always done pretty good. I just missed it tonight. Hey, good time at it. Messed up with the tire prep. He used the name brand. This detergent set it on this week. Third place for Mr. Fire. All right, finish line wash pros, LLC dash series. 
Zach Campolonia on the SRI performance poll with Chris Lawson on the answer. Row number two, Steven Tatuches and Josh Long. Chris Britton, Martin Coberly in the next row. Kelly Britt, welcome, welcome back. back. And Robert Showalter in the next row. Row number six, Brian Shaw and Magic Mike Mill. Row seven, Dylan Latour and Dwayne Stepp Jr. Dwayne. <laughs> Lead to real estate champion, David Markham and Chris Gwynn in the next room. Mrs. Kitty, Jen Welsh, and Dan Morag. Jonathan Mabe, our local hero, and Jamie Edwards in the 03. Grayson Trexler and Evan Snyder making his DNQ debut. That might be somebody seeing the Bush series next year. You never know. These guys are also great candidates for the Bush or Filthy Mechanic Pro Cup series next year. But right now we're finish line dash series racing. 390 stock Predator engines. Hoosiers, small ones all the way around. There you go. Yeah. Who would have thought when we started this series that a year or two later, the biggest class of the night is left fronts on all four corners. <laughs> For some reason, like the racing in it is amazing. And I don't I don't know. I I have no idea. I, I would have never thought Dylan Silverman, of all people, is the guy who said, you should try this. And you know what? Look at it. So we thank Dylan we for that. We can't give him any credit. Let's stop that. We, we don't give credit. <laughs> yeah, no. For, DQ. I'll, I'll edit yeah. that out. Okay. I'll blank his name out. Green flag. It's all our reason. Yeah. Green flag. There we yeah. go. We got one up top at least trying it. Hell yeah. Somebody's making some speed up there. Once you get these suckers wound up, they really fly. Um, but one thing we didn't touch on earlier, Jay-Z, and maybe you can uh, – Give some more insight is why is the brake pedal disconnected on every one of these go-karts? <laughs> I, I think ARCA braking is the technique that is taught on the rookie school for DNQ. To get your license, you have to disconnect the brake pedal on the left side. Um, or maybe it's like sagging your pants, you know what I mean, if you want to be gangster. It's just a cool thing to do in the Dash series. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Campolonia was the leader, and he lost it to Chris Lawson pretty quick. So uh, he's starting to fall back a little bit. Is that something where you qualify during the days we're on board with David Markham, who's got a good case of the hot farts up here running right the middle? Yeah, it looked like everybody had a 2,000-pound right front spring in turns three and four there. Chris Lawson's really become a household name here in the DNQ series. He kind of showed up hot. And really, like we thought, maybe that was a one-hit wonder, and he's stayed there. I don't think he's finished worse than second yet. Caution came out there for something that I don't know what happened. To go back green with Chris Lawson leading again. Campolonia took the outside. Let's see if he can take it away from Lawson, as he does coming off oh. to. Oh, 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 Coverly goes for a spin. Yeah, he just got shit canned right there. That was a good one. That'll bring out the caution. Lawson again. Good to see Kelly Britt back. We had a little problem with him not wanting to pass Tech. He's back. He's legal. Good to see you back, Kelly. Glad we could get that squared away as we are back under green flag conditions with Campolonia on the outside. Yeah, see, I mean, look at that. Kelly Britt was cheating like hell. I mean, half-tracked people. And, I mean, it was, it was obvious. We said, hey, man, all right, you won. We're wasting our time. You and I both know it. Let's go to Tech and Tech your tires. No, we're not doing it. Okay, well, served his suspension, paid his fine. He's back now and running in the top five legal. I mean, see, that just goes to prove all you cheating motherfuckers out there don't need to cheat to run good. All you got to do is get a good setup on a good cart with a stock motor and a good driver. And Kelly Britt has, I don't know, half a year's experience now. And look, he's running up there in the top five. I wonder if, if running up front, as we've got another caution here, someone probably went around in the, the back stretch here. Is that Lawson? Take no. a look at what. No, Evan Snyder. Snyder. Jen Welsh goes for a little loop. Yeah. Bring uh, it out. Going, going back to, to running up front, I wonder if it's a lot like a, a 12 year old talking about seeing boobs. It ain't seen boobs. Like you, you don't know what they are until you run up front, so you cheat a little bit. You find out what a good go kart's supposed to feel like. And then you actually understand what you're missing out on. You can go to work in the notebook, go to work during the week on the scales, uh, make some adjustments and get quicker. So I, I, mean, I don't know, Bill, I don't know if that's the experience you've had with some of the young drivers you've coached over the years, but it's, it might be some of the, the things we're seeing here. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what test days are for, though. You don't need to do it on a race weekend. Like, if you want to go and hog out your restrictor plate or whatever for your six-year-old son, let him go feel what speed is, like, you know, go go on a test day and let him do that. You want to try some prep tires or whatever and see if your chassis is worn out? Like, go on a test day. Millbridge runs almost seven days a week. I mean, just all you got to do is just show up. Uh, there's no need to do it during a race and risk getting caught, risk getting fined and thrown out, and everybody looks bad because of it. Sponsors don't like that. You know, you're not going to win races. You get a, a bad reputation as a cheater, uh, as Josh Long has not cheated and he's coming to the lead. Uh, everything's just bad about cheating here in the DNQ series. We've got to catch you. So, um, I mean, Chris Lawson has passed Tech three, four times now. And he's in the top three, won some races, been legal every single time. So it is possible to win and be legal. Yes, he's battling with Campolone. Zach Campolone has gotten so much better. And I don't, I don't know what it – he ran in uh, Florida. He used to race go-karts, won a couple championships. But what, what I like is when you watch these guys race for a decent amount of time and all of a sudden they start to get it. Like Josh Long, one of those guys, he used to run mid-pack. All of a sudden he started to get it. Zach Campolone, same thing. They're just starting to pick up on it. And it's fun to watch them develop. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's th those two are not the only examples in the field, too. We just watched Thomas Markham, whose nickname was Thomas Back Markham, run in the top two the whole race. So um, it's everywhere in the DNQ series. The key is you got to show up to every race, you got to try, and you're going to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing people get the progression through the series. We've got some guys that, you know, like a like a Brandon Jones are definitely cup ready at this point. You know, they, they've just got to make the jump. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if we keep trying. Like Jonathan Mabe, he's the guy I'm rooting for. I'm waiting for him to make that big jump. He's been in the series a long time. He's got a damn good-looking go-kart underneath him right now. We just got to find some speed in that son of a gun, and hopefully he'll, he'll be up front soon. Zach Campolonia going after Chris Lawson. These two are battling it out pretty freaking hard here. This is a good race. They are. They're racing clean, too. Not something we see a lot in the DNQ series as the yellow is out. Five to go. Five to go caution here. Here we go. Can Josh Long hold him off? Let's see. I mean, he's been strong, but we'll see if he can make it happen. As the uh, green is back out, it's time to get the kitty cat claws out here, Jay-Z. Yeah, they're going to be scratching, looking for some extra room. Is Mike Melton, he's making his name known late in the going here. He's running mid-pack for most of the race, but uh, he's trying to make his way through there. We got the long runaway out front, Campolonia and Lawson side to side. It's a hornet's nest. It's become ultra competitive. Melton won the championship last year, was almost dominant, and now we're seeing him running about fifth. I mean, this is very competitive. It's Josh Long now taking home. Yeah, Josh Long beating up this field. I mean, he is really stretching his legs right now. Zach Campolonia finally gets past Chris Lawson into the second spot. Lawson really brave running an all white body here in DMQ. I expected a couple of donuts to be on the side of that thing already. Still nice and clean, but it's all Josh Long with that clean air out in front of this field. One more white lap flag to go. Out for that white, white flag out for that white and pink machine. Zach Campolonia having a great run too, but tonight it is all Josh Long in the Finish Line Wash Pros Dash Series taking his first win of the season. Anthony Long, winner Josh here. Scott. Oh, Josh Long, okay. No, announcing. <laughs> You're a horrible announcer. I don't know none of y'all's names. Good grief. Eddie just put me to work just off the spot. He found me on the street corner up in Mooresville. But, man, how about that? You don't obey your crew chief by going to the outside. You choose the inside, but you still daggum win. I, I didn't even look at him. I didn't look at anybody, honestly. I, I thought I was going to finish second to the 38. He was super fast. Zach was fast. I did some changes on this thing. We moved the hub around. Everybody kept telling me to go up on air pressures. I haven't been listening to them. Went up on air pressures tonight, worked out. It was, it was fun. It was really fun. It was fun racing them guys. Well, damn, you the one man now on Kawiki, then. You can do everything yourself, can't you? I listen to everybody else. If it wasn't for Magic and Turbo and all them guys, Showalter, Welch, Ayers, everybody. Like, everybody kind of helps me out on this whole deal. Like, I know everybody has their own little crews, but, like, Steven, all them guys, they, uh, they all help me out. So I kind of just take bits and pieces and listen to everybody, and it works out sometimes. 
You heard it right there, folks. He's got magic on his crew. He's got the Magic Johnson blood. He drives like Tim Richmond. He's your winner here in the DQ Dash. Camp Alonga. That's the first. He finally told me how to pronounce his last name. I've been calling him Camp Granola all night. But third place, man, just like your hair. He was red hot out there. The car was really good. It actually rolled the top a lot better than I expected. I actually finished second. So first first top three here at Millbridge. So definitely take it. I want to thank Rob Showalter, Adam Welch, uh, Contrino family, all my people that I work with coming out and supporting me and Millbridge for hosting DNQ series and congrats to Josh on a win. Can't miss this man. You can't miss him on the podium with that red hair. Camp Alonga, Camp Ground, Camp Granola, top three. <laughs> Chris Lawson. Well, you at least put it on the front row like your shirt said. You ain't in victory lane, but still second's pretty good. Yeah, it's good man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Really enjoyed racing with those guys. I mean, it was definitely hard, hard racing, but it was, uh, I mean, it was as clean as you could get, I think, for this. Um, a lot of fun, though, man. I can't tell you how much I enjoy this and uh, no pressure, no no pressure fun like this is. So it's good times, man. I'd say you went from first to fifth to first, almost to sixth, but end up second. That's pretty good. I think there's a little bit, a couple dents on that brand new white body, though. Yeah, I know the, uh, the body hanger's not going to be impressed with it, but it's all good. We're going for the win, so. That's uh, second place right there. He's still at least on the front row. Take a look at the USAC starting lineup on the pole will be Charlie Kingen, who's been really fast as of late, and John Kidwell in John Kinder's cart. Desi Tattoo Juice <laughs> and David Mayonnaise. Uh, Anthony Kidwell, who's been fast as of late, and Curtis Beeson, who's made a strong showing recently. Tyler Richmond, now driving Ryan Richmond's stuff, his brother, and Stephen Tattoo Juice. <laughs> Dirty Air, Don Colwell, and Mike Connery. Uh, Magic Mike Melton and uh, perennial favorite David Crops. Zach Donahue and Rob Bates. Well, that'll round out the field. I didn't even know that shit. Uh, Don uh, Donald Colwell starting lineup row. We'll just call that the super size me row. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's it. Sorry, You're guys. Be in I can't talk night. shit. <laughs> yes. here's, here's the USAC deal. Champ Buggy uh, with a clone. I mean, that's just basically what this series is. Man, <laughs> I mean, this series has grown so much, man. I I'm almost amazed by it and uh here we go green flag is out dude now bill we've seen a lot of arrow stuff go on in this series we see charlie king and probably the king charlie kingpin probably the king of putting arrow devices on their cart now i've had people come up to me and say when is enough enough well apparently it's not enough i i don't think adding drag to a cart is really worse uh, zach donahue is just going to go ahead and make us bring out the caution I'm not so sure adding that and knowing not knowing drag to downforce coefficients, I'm not really sure if it's really doing anything as a green flag is out. Yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, we've seen it work both ways. We see Steven Tatuges go to the bottom of Charlie Kingpin right now with a perfectly clean, nothing added buggy, a USAC buggy. And, you know, he's making it work with a good setup and the right, you know, tire combination on that machine but charlie kingpin he's been fast every single week with all that arrow stuff on there we've seen joey gase run up front with a bunch of arrow stuff on his machine so you know it, it makes me wonder maybe it's not the fastest thing but maybe it's just a little bit crutch if you're a little bit off you know oh kingpin oh, goes around he's wow. a very off not a little he's off you know, it makes hopes. me wonder if it's a bit of a crutch to where you can be off a little bit and not run that bad where when you don't have all that arrow on your card, if you miss it, you're, you're dog shit. You know, I, you know, Bill, I don't have a problem with it either. As long as it's safely attached and it's within the perimeter of the chassis, I say go for it. Let's let DNQ lead the innovation in the champ cart market and, and come up with new designs. Have these guys in their garage trying to you know, add a fuel line that'll hold an extra gallon of gas, an extra wide floor pan that'll cut the air from underneath it. You know what I mean? Go go all Harry Hog on it. Have fun, man. Why not? You know, I've seen that there's a lot of shortages in champ buggy chassis right now, especially in the southeast area where Mildred Speedway is. And I know that there are some people talking about going to start making their own champ buggy chassis. So that would be very interesting to see if they more target the Ooh. treaded stuff or just, oh, oh. no. Oh. <laughs> Big Tyler Tim. Richmond. Tyler Richmond goes around in that Tim Richmond machine. Wow. That's uh, his first race running open wheel. And I think his head popped I think off. he learned a valuable lesson. He learned a valuable lesson to hit bumpers instead of try and miss this. Kidwell gets into Todges, and he tries to miss the wreck. Oh, no. 
And that's where the problem happens. Oh. There, there goes the nose cone. Watch his feet. Almost oh. touched the track. The seatbelts work. Would you call that his, a front? Uh, his penis broke his fall right is, there. Is that a front handspring <laughs> in gymnastics? I don't know, but I would not want to be that crotch belt. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Oh God! Uh, he is okay oh, as, as we Arenas. go back green. That was a yeah. Yeah, Cotterino on the gas weird, there, putting everybody up into the high line. And, uh, wow, we got a hornet's nest. And uh, yellow's out. I don't... Debris caution. Is that what it was? Debris caution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't know that was a body panel. They go back to the lap that they did not complete, so Kidwell will be the leader as the green flag is back out. Man, Cotterino got a jump there. That's it's very interesting. Yeah, Kidwell and, uh, not. Uh, Jay-Z. No, you're good. Yeah, good. Kidwell didn't fall for that a second time, that's for sure. But uh, Conorino's still up into the third spot. Jay-Z, you've watched a lot of these things race before. What stands out to you that's so much different between this and the front stop? For, for me, it's the champ buggies and how stiff the chassis are with that cage on it. It's extra weight they carry. Um, they just don't transfer weight the same way. So they look stiff. The CG's a little, a way higher than you would normally have. Um, it, just, it just changes the dynamic. And also... You know, some people will choose to run a, a higher seat, like a that's not reclined back as far, like, you know, nine or ten inches off the axle, whatever is from the lip. So, you know, some of the senior members of our, our series here might feel more comfortable in the go-kart. So I, I think that's the biggest thing. It's the CG and the, the stiffness of the chassis for me. I think, uh, Bill, watching these guys get off the corner and turn right, it's freaking crazy. I mean, these guys are actually searching for drive off. Should you search for the moisture at the bottom of the racetrack on exit? Well, I'm searching for the moisture every single night, Bob. But, uh, oh, and we got uh, who's in the 68 machine? Desi Todges Desi. and Anthony Kidwell. That's the second. Uh, Kidwell got Stephen Todges. Now he got the he made it a family affair. He got both the Todges tonight. And uh, tough break for Kidwell. Yeah, that's going to be two against one. He better uh, watch his ass when he gets back to the trailer because they are not going to be happy with him. Desi having a very good run. And, oh, she gets tangled up again. Oh, not her fault that Curtis time. Curtis Beeson. Curtis Beeson involved in that. Man, we're, having, we're struggling to get some restarts here. Does Curtis Black Beeson 14. <laughs> have a windshield cut in that nose cone? <laughs> yeah, he does, so you can see through it. Oh, dirty air Donald oh. Caldwell just gets into his left rear. I don't know if he had some help from Mayo yeah, there. Yeah, it looks like he got Mayo caught may up have there pushed also. him into it. Just one of those chain reactions. Yeah, yeah. do you think it's Hellman's or Stuff Dukes? happens. Uh, I'm, he said Hellman's, and we actually brought that up in the post-race interview as a green flag. Oh, surprising. <laughs> I think it's he's from Atlanta. Say. I figured he'd be a Dukes mayonnaise, uh, but yeah. Maybe yeah, not. he needs a sponsor. I am not a Dukes person. Helps yeah. all the way, yeah. man. I can't be that Dukes stuff. I'm not from the south. Nah, tastes like spoiled. <laughs> well, Mayo, he he tried to uh, throw some Mayo on that left rear. Mike Melton's car. Melton does pretty good in these uh, champ cars. He does, and right now he's showing Mayo how to get around the outside of this joint. Melton's already got some laps here. How much does that pay off? All right, guys, well, let's go through the field real quick before the five to go. Johnny Kidwell doing a great job so far tonight, guys. Started second, currently first. That Kinder Machine is on a rail. Let's see if he can close it out as the laps wind down here and we get to this five to go caution. Yeah, running in second is Mike Contarino. He started ninth. He's our big mover for the race. Contarino getting these buggies dialed in. Third spot. We're seeing David Mayo. He started third, running third. A model of consistency. That cart's looking good. Steady hands. Uh, he's got a shot to win tonight. The Moon Eyes machine of Mike Melton. He started 11th, currently fourth. Has the most passes so far in the track. When he's not driving to the NASCAR races in a semi-truck, he is driving here. And looks like Stephen Todd just had enough of Anthony Kidwell's <laughs> shit, and he dumped him <laughs> off a of two. Let's take a look at the replay. Oh, yeah, uh, that's yeah. definitely family payback. Yeah. <laughs> Good old-fashioned street justice, Jay-Z. <laughs> oh, you got to take care of it. you got to take it into your own hands, hockey style. You know what I mean? Just drop the gloves and say, stay the hell away from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Great. There's so many things that could be said innuendo-wise there that I'm just not going to say. <laughs> it. Uh. 
Kidwell driving Kinder stuff. Is this a the new Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals thing we're seeing here in this series? Well, Kinder definitely wasn't getting it done himself. I don't know if he just couldn't see it at night anymore or what, but uh, <laughs> Kidwell really getting it done. He's an ace here in the southeast, and when you put him in a good car, and we know Kinder can definitely tune in a machine, both the body and on the go-kart, Put a good driver in that. They're going to be successful. As uh, we watch back here, this is the battle for fourth. Charlie Kingpin with all that arrow not getting it done tonight. Yeah, still a good run, man. Uh, five, ten laps ago, he was facing the wrong way in the infield. So he's slowly marching back as he's still got some uh, time to work here. He's definitely a, he's a pretty good driver, man. I mean, you look at, like, Kingpin and Kidwell. Kidwell's in kinder stuff. And they've tested a lot. They know what they need. But, I mean, these two right here alone. David Mayo, another impressive driver. Contarino is, like, is sneaky good. He's a, There are times you watch him race, you're like, this guy's really good. And then there's other times you watch him race, and you're like, this guy's really bad. <laughs> yeah. Some surprises <laughs> DNQ <laughs> very well. <laughs> Five to go caution. Let's see what can happen here. Can Contarino sack up and make it happen? Green flag is out. We're underway. Five to go. You know, Mayo battling Conorino for second. He shoves it down under him. Can't quite get it done. Gets hit from behind and, oh, holds on to it. Oh, they s Chaos Desi. behind him. Arca breaking everywhere. Somehow the Todges, somehow Desi and Steve Todges are involved in every wreck tonight and none of them have been their fault. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's see. Conorino's starting to get a little sniff. Yeah, here comes Mayo back underneath him. Oh, <laughs> Magic Melton. Mike Melton giving Kingpin a right side nerf bar. Mayo normally loves the top side, doing very well here on the bottom. Hopefully he can get used to being a bottom bitch. You, you got to on a night like tonight. I mean, Kidwell showing how to get it done. You got to get that left front down the line, make sure you get a nice shallow drive off so that card's pointing straight. As he's got a, one more lap of Millbridge. Well, it looks like that Kinder machine with Kidwell driving is going to take the win here in the USAC series. They did pass a tire test. He is our official winner. Let's go down and talk. And to down in victory lane. Kidwell getting a Stone Cold beer bath. Oh, and he's going to chug him a bush latte down here in victory lane. Let's hope you don't get pulled over by Morsel's finest on the way home, but that bath is worth it. Oh, hell yeah. Um, man, that thing was fast. I thought we were going to be a little bit in trouble there. We got uh, screwed a little bit on the caution, um, but we were fortunate enough the caution came back out. But I think we were plenty capable fast enough to come back to, you know, if, if uh, that happened, come back to the field and get the win. And uh, so we did. Um, I can't I can't thank John uh, Kinder enough and, and what he's done for me. Uh, you know, we're two for two. Uh, you know, last DNQ race, we came out here, we won. and, and uh, you know, to keep the street going feels great. Um, you know, I, I, I got to thank him for everything. You know, he puts me in the cart, and, uh, you know, I just hold the steering wheel and drive the damn thing. So I got I to thank uh, Rims One. Uh, appreciate everything that they do and uh, KSR Motors. Uh, once again, like I said, John Kinder, he's, uh, he's the man. He's got this damn buggy hooked up, and, uh, you know, but, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to drive for him and drive a fast piece and be competitive every week. He said he drives the damn thing. He drove the hell out of it down here. He's in victory lane. Here in the USACs. Okay. Mike Contarino, second place in the number 18. Got you a bush latte, man, but I know you'd rather be drowning in them over there. Yeah, I would, but I think I was uh, just off a little on gear. He was he was quick, and starting nine, finishing second ain't too bad. Um, My cart was really good. Got to thank SKE chassis, but I wish we could have got one more spot. Y'all were right only cut each other's cages back there, banging shit boxes, but you come home and say your stuff's still in one piece for the next time. You can come out. You still got one more opportunity to come out here and tear it up next time. Oh, it'll be tore up. <laughs> <laughs> Contarino, second place here to the NQ Cart Series. Damon, David Hellman's Mayo here, third place. Well, it ain't a good tomato sandwich. You just got mayo on there, but third place still pretty good. It's a reasonable meal. Yeah, we'll definitely take a little bit of mayo with that one after uh, the way the night started to unfold there because it was a little hairy. You know, we started third, finished third. We finished third a lot now. Seems to be our number, so three for Dale as always. 
Now we just got to figure out what we can do to get the Steve Park number. I say he's pulling a little DEI references there. A little bit Bush Latte. Hellman's or uh, Duke's? I'm going to have to go with uh, Hellman's for sure because that's one of our sponsors at JRM. Kind of looked like it. Kind of looked like a Miracle Whip guy. I was just wondering. <laughs> at least you ain't duping the doll up a daisy. Right. I like to uh, thank Pop Tart, Tim Sheets, at Hellraiser Jack for everything they do, and Scott Hill. Appreciate you guys and everything you do. We'll be back. David Mayonnaise, third place here with the USAC. <laughs> Filthy Mechanic Clothing Pro Cup Series. Carson Ferguson is on the SRI pole with Zach Stroop on the outside. Room two, Brian Shaw and Chris Lawson. Row three, Chris Bailey and Ryan Ayers. Chris Bailey's doing pretty good. He's starting to get up through the field there. Austin Compton, Eric Yost in the next row. Nick Bashford and Stephen Horney. Love duct tape numbers. <laughs> John Kidwell and Dylan Latour. <sighs> Alfredo Hidalgo and J.R. Norris. I gotta get J.R.'s picture in the next row. Blaine Donahue and Anthony Kidwell. Not making a good reputation for himself. <laughs> Ron Schutt and Duncan Allen. We had three Earnhardts there Ron in a row. Shoot. You see that? I gotta do better. <laughs> you do a better job at getting pictures. Three. This is so. This will be Bush Series rules next year as well. Uh, good deal. Jay Z, your guy's got an in car camera tonight. What do you uh, think? I think he's gonna put on a good show. I, I expect some sponsors to be watching. I heard they're in the stands. And I hope he gets a, a good deal out of this. You know what I mean? He may have to do some cup racing on the side to support DNQ. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and the Filthy Mechanic Pro Cup. But I'm ready to see what happens with the green flag waves. And we're off. 30 entries tonight for this series. We started 18 Ooh. of them. And looks like we're going to take about half of them out on the first lap. <laughs> Lawson almost goes around after a fantastic run earlier tonight. We're four wide for 40th place. They are not saluting the fans. They are actually racing here in the <laughs> DNQ series. <laughs> now, we talked about it earlier. Uh, DNQ is racing entertainment. It's always been that way, but now we're branding it more as a racing entertainment series, which is we throw five to go. We have double file restarts. It's more, it's real racing, but it's more on the entertainment factor than it would be your regular Woodley for Liberty show, Jay-Z. This is, this is fun racing, and we're going to brand it as racing entertainment, not just go And that's race. why 30 guys showed up to run this class today. You know what I mean? You go, to, you go to Woodley, if you go to Liberty, you go to Patriot, whatever, and there's 15, 20 classes with six carts each in them. You know I mean, and everyone on the message boards after the race complaining about this or about that. You, you come here. Uh, you have a different experience as a racer, and you have a different experience as a fan. And speaking of fan, we're on board with Brian Shaw right now. My boy's getting it done. He's getting down on that white line. He's getting a nice straight drive off. Those hands look good and smooth. He doesn't even have to think about using that brake pedal. He's just uh, running down that leader best he can. He's, his stuff's good there, Bill. I don't I don't know. He's he's pretty up there in the points, too. It could be down to him, Austin Compton, and somebody else here as, uh, as they're racing for the end of the season. Yeah, it looks a little bit slick down there on the inside, but he's running down Carson Ferguson. You know, one thing you don't have to worry about the DNQ series is fuckery with the rules because we will catch you and we will throw you out. don't matter who you are. And that, that, I believe, has gained DNQ a lot of respect. You know, that's why we keep seeing 30 class fields that and race it for a warm case of cheap beer. Don't forget, DNQ's thrown out guys that have won hundreds of thousands of dollars at big money shows. You know what I mean? It's a, a names don't matter here. I guess could be a, a catchphrase. You know, you you want to come, you want to have a good time and have an equal shot like everyone else. As long as you got your shit bolted on the right way, have at it. Show up at DNQ, you'll have a good time. Yeah, and this race had a lot of money added to the purse. This was a this is a 700 to win, 750 to win race here tonight, because we had the Zach Smith fine, we had uh, the purse roll over from last race because we threw everybody out yeah. <laughs> with the engine tech. So it's like, you know, this is a big money to win race. It's a 40 lap feature when you're getting up there in 750 to win. I mean, this is a pretty good amount to take home. Yeah, we don't see the Riggins brothers here, and that is because they are suspended for a race. So you've got to be legal if you're going to come race here in the DNQ series or you're just not going to race, and we don't really care if we like you, if we don't like you, if you're great, if you suck. Uh, and, and, you know, it's it's showing because they've had to Ooh. sit home. 
Oh. Uh, Blaine Donahue there. Looks like he, he uh, had too much camber in the right front, and blew a right front. Hoosier said it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Hoosier said he had too much camber, and it was his fault. He blew, blew that tire. Green flagger back underway. Um, oh! Wow, we got a left rear. Kidwell on the back of Ayers. <laughs> you know, we have those left rear bumper covers. They still find a way to jump them. Ayers gave the old number one on the way by. Not the fastest number one we've ever seen in the DAQ series, but that was pretty quick. Speaking of number one, J.R. Norris had a good run there, lost all of his momentum. He just had not towards the front of the field. J.R. Norris ran in the truck series before, so he's got a lot of racing experience. Despite a lot of the other guys in this series, <laughs> I definitely don't. The top two cards, Carson Ferguson and Austin Compton, Zach Smith usually driving that 70 machine. These guys run out of the same stable. Obviously, they have the same decal, same look. Their stuff is on par right here tonight. It is, and they, they ran really good uh, last week, and Carson Ferguson was not happy he got his engine claimed. That is a rule here in the DNQ series. All these stock predators are a claim class. So, you know, you can go out here like Carson Ferguson is right now. Brian Shaw going by Austin Compton. Compton comes back on the inside. You know, if you if you win, you can get that engine claim, then you're going to have to find something new for next week. Yeah, at the price of what it would pay to buy a normal Predator engine, $125. Now, they should be stock anyway to begin with, so uh, if we get into it and it's wrong, then you still fail. But you can claim somebody's if you think it's newer, as uh, Shaw now... Oh. Smacking Bashford around the four cart goes for a little bit of a spin. He's going to get it back collected and roll. And we're still green. Looking to merge on the Carson Ferguson. There, it looks like he put his <laughs> blinker on. <laughs> Shaw's starting to fall back a little bit here, Jay Z. Bashford Kidwell getting by him. Looks like uh, last year's champion, Zach Stroop, trying to make a run on yeah, him as well. Yeah, I think he just got flustered after that last restart. He got shuffled back, banged doors a couple times with some people, and he's just got to. Settle down, hit his marks again, and he'll he'll get back up there. We still have a five to go caution, so he's got a shot. As we watch some of these cards circulate, I just want to go back, and I know we say it every week, but uh, uh, Jeremy did a, did a great job with track, track prep again. I know there was a, a ton of rain the night before, and the track started off really slick. We see that nice groove getting run in. We're seeing some side-by-side -side racing. So, you know, Millbridge, another reason the DNQ guys keep coming back for more. Uh, one thing I want to touch on while we got a little bit of a downturn here in the action is uh, the Hall of Fame voting. The DNQ Hall of Fame voting is on the Facebook page. Bill, you're on there. You're a first balloter. I'm not sure if you're going to make it, but uh, the fans can vote. F fans can vote, and uh, it's worth 50% of the vote and a small panel. Us and a few of the other DNQ elites will vote for the other 50% of the vote. And... Uh, Man, I'm excited to get some Hall of Famers on the website here, starting to roll here, probably in a couple days. Didn't I sign piece on there? I vote for her. He did too. That's the problem, I think. <laughs> Man, Anywho, been some uh, all stars you know, throughout the years here, the DMQ series. Tim and I definitely come to mind. I mean, we've got the uh, in back inaugural uh, DMQ Dirt Champion. Who comes to mind? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, Tyler Young. Yeah, we've got a lot of great names as we uh, crank it up. Well, that's what your lawnmower sure sounds like at home. Uh, that was the best we could do for cranking <laughs> up with a freaking predator. I mean, it's, sorry, I man. I was editing this, and I'm like, pressure wash my driveway yeah. with more power. Than that. <laughs> yeah, the finish line wash pros pressure washer has more power than that right there. 
when there's a downturn in the action and we don't want to talk, we go ahead and set the deal down for a, a long talk here. Let's go on board with Brian Shaw for this restart here. We only have a few laps left. Let's see what it's like from his seat. Well, okay. don't look at that left foot because it won't be moving much. Only Arca breaking from here on out. We're four wide for fourth place. You know what caught my eye there, Jay-Z? Kidwell had a good restart, and he was right on Ferguson's bumper there. It's like he was waiting uh, till the five Yeah, yeah, he knew what he was doing, and I'm, I'm impressed. I, judging by the way those rear bearing hangers go over the front, I think he's running like a 2009 or a 2011 Eccentric or something like that. I haven't seen one of those in a minute, so I, it's cool for a go-kart nerd like myself to see one of those bad boys running out front right now. Yeah, putting the pressure on Ferguson. Ferguson nice and tidy off a of three to four. And he knows how to get around the speedway. We see two sticks in the air, but four wide going into turn one. Yeah, Ryan Ayers doing his best. He had a penalty for a jet size and an engine. He failed tech as a white flag is out. So he's trying to get as many points as he can. He's got a deficit to come back, but Kidwell has a run and he is gonna look to the inside of Ferguson. Oh, he feeds him the nerf bar. Is he gonna be able to make it past? Two Who won that? To call. I could tell, that was crazy. Carson Ferguson is gonna cross the line first. Oh. Unfortunately, in the tech shed, he fails surge. No. Let's take a look Carson. at this again real quick, Jay-Z. Yeah, uh, Kidwell did what he had to do. Eight tires are better than four. Used each other up, but left another room with the line. Uh, Ferguson just got that cart pointed a little bit quicker and made it to the line first. Well, Johnny Kidwell, you just had to have a little bit more inches. You can take that however you want to. But use a, but use a, That's the story of my life. Well, you was a couple inches short there from Carson Ferguson at the line. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, I uh, we had a fast speed, so we started 11th. We got up, and made our way, and a restart chose the outside in six, and then I, you know how the restarts go, just got screwed, and wheel hop somebody rode down the back stretch all the way. So, you know, uh, man, that, that damn thing was fast, and I like again I, in the champ card, I can't thank John Kinder enough for uh, putting this thing together, and this was kind of a late night or last minute decision, so I say uh, John was out there working on it all last night and getting it ready for today, so I can't thank him enough, like I said. And, uh, you know, to, to come back from the back to the front, back to the front, and I almost had a chance there. You know, I, I tried setting him up in one and two. I knew if I can get to his bumper to dive bomb him, you know, I'm you know, going for 750 wins. So, you know, I knew if I was going to do it clean. So it, and it was clean. <laughs> Just needed a few more inches, like I said, story of my life. But I say get a little bit more excited next time. You might beat him by a hit or two. Kidwell, second place here with the Pro Cup. <laughs> well, Austin Compton, third place. You probably had the best seat in the house right there for that battle. Yeah, it was tough. It's hard to outrun the 70 cart. Whatever we've done to it, it's good. And I was good tonight. That last restart just killed me. I was reeling in Carson at the end, but now we got to get through the tech shed. You know, none of our carts have made it through yet. It's um, something every time, so hopefully tonight we can get through, and hopefully tonight I prove my point that I'm not a dumbass to these DNQ guys in their little video. So we'll see what happens. Well, hell, you ain't got your corner, Zachary Smith, doping up tires, putting on illegal motor. Y'all see him in Ohio. Y'all might be legal tonight now that Zachary Smith is a couple hours away. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, uh, Me and Zach both maintenance our own cart and keep them in the same shop. So, uh, you know, we got a good program going, and hopefully we can keep the momentum going. Um, I want to thank Chris Rogers, my father-in-law, uh, Jeff Smith, my stepdad, my brother Zach, Piedmont Paving, Precision Tree Service. Um, FK Rod Ends, Eddie Waddell, um, Compton's Weldon Fab. Hopefully we'll get the win next time. Compton, third place, two spots short of his makeshift teammate. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cup Series points. We're not going to go over final results, whatever. These are points after halfway through the season. Stroop the leader, Showalter has a shot, Welsh has a shot. The rest of the guys really don't. It's a three-horse race. It is, but it's a damn good race too because those are your top three, and they are almost—they are all in the top five every single week. So those guys got to keep it together, and whoever runs the best out of the last few races is going to be the champion. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, we got some guys in there that, again, talking about uh, our comments earlier about the war coming up for next year. You know, guys like Winslow and Roop, they're just running a ton of races. They're up their own points. I mean, Broy has more spins than he does points, and he's six right now. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it goes to show, just show up and make the race. You'll do okay. The, the best thing between Stroop and Showalter is I could tell that they really don't like each other that much. Um, so it makes it makes it for an even better rivalry when these guys race each other. So we'll see how that plays out towards the end of the season, especially that bottom group coming in. I don't think Stroop is as strong on the bottom as he was usually uh, tonight. Let's take a look at the race we just watched, Filthy Mechanic Pro Cup Series. Austin copped in the points leader, but man, Jay-Z, your guy, he's five back. I mean... This is going to be tight. Right. Dude, with 15 to go in that race, he got shuffled back to 7th or 8th, and he was fighting for 3rd spot as they were coming to the checkered flag there. So he, he's getting it together. Uh, he's just got to breathe a little bit, stay calm. Um, you know, he's, he's got a decent lead. Bashford and, and Stroop and Ayers, they've got to have a lot happen to try to catch him. So, you know, we'll see what happens. It's going to be an exciting end of the year. Let's not forget, we have the road course, the fair, I mean, these are all those ringer races, and then we have Tech. So, I mean, Bill, you know how Tech is. When you're the points leader, you start to get teched. Even if you don't win, you start to get teched. It's just part of the process. It seems like Tech has been the hardest thing for all of our competitors, and really for no reason. All they have to do is just show up legal. We've definitely given more points away to people um, that didn't win the race or take the checkered flag first, I should say. Um, so some of these guys, if they finish, you know, second, third, maybe even fourth we've seen so far this year and are illegal, they might come home with the win. Yeah, absolutely. Anything is possible here in the DNQ Carney series. I think people are starting to understand that they need to show up right. Uh, Bush series, we looked at it earlier. Kidwell and Hodges, Teasley's there. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work, but uh, he, he could win this championship. He's only 69 back. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's enough. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Good. That's a good way. That's something good to finish on right there. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Finish Line Wash Pros Dash Series. And this one's pretty interesting. Joe Walter, 865. Joey Gase had a sub driver tonight. He's 15 back. Josh Long just won. 25 back with Todd just 25 back. Even Melton could win this thing. That is tight. I mean, those top five are in the hunt every single week. I mean, Show Walter is a force to be reckoned with. Joey Gase does not let him have it easy at all. Josh Long, who is a little bit more hit and miss, but only 25 back. I mean, you could easily make that up in a race. Steven Talges is a force to be reckoned with every single week when he's not getting spun out or caught up in somebody else's wreck. And Magic Mike Melton, if those guys have some trouble on the track or in the tech shed, he's right there to capitalize too. It's not like he's had many off nights either. So that with as many races left in the season as we do, that this whole top five here in the Dash Series it could be anybody's championship. Yeah, I, I mean, everything's so close. Uh, someone could just figure out to add a uh, you know, half a percent of left side weight or, or just one small thing, and all of a sudden they pick up two tenths, and instead of Tao just being 25 behind, he's 25 ahead in two races. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a close one. I'm excited. It's going to be a, a good, uh, good second half of the season. Yeah, watching these guys race each other on the track is even more exciting because I know Joey Gase – and Josh Long spent a lot of time bitch slapping each other on the racetrack. So <laughs> we'll see how that works out. And I know Showalter gets involved in that sometimes as well. And uh, let's take a look at USAC. Final uh, point standings we're going to look at here. Joey Gase, another one of those guys, had somebody drive for him tonight as well. But when you look at it, he's got a pretty good lead. But Mike Melton, Charlie Kingpin, even Curtis Beeson. Man, that would be a story, wouldn't it, to come back and win this championship? Man, he runs good sometimes. He's had a couple off nights here. I, you know, maybe he just needs to, like Jay-Z said, make a couple little adjustments to get his uh, swagger back, if you will. Joey Gase runs good every single week. Uh, Magic Mike Melton, he's been right there in that double lot. And Charlie Kingpin with all that arrow on the car, like we talked about during the race. You know, even when he misses it, he's never off. And 25 points, if Joey Gase 
you know, misses a race or, you know, gets caught up in a crash, he could be leading the points next race. If Curtis Beeson wins this championship, I'm getting a t-shirt made. I promise I'm saying it on here right now. If he wins a championship, I'm getting a Beeson championship t-shirt made for sure. <laughs> You have to. I mean, how could you not? It's like the ageless wonder. Yeah. David Kropp's doing a great job there in fifth as well. Who's mentioned him? Done a great job. Finished all the laps so far this season. Well, guys, I mean, this is uh, we're starting to heat up a little bit, getting into these summer months. And the next race is coming up here, uh, July seventh. Pretty excited to see how this plays out. Uh, it's definitely been an interesting season so far. Yeah, really excited to be there for uh, the July seventh race. Uh, We'll be doing a lot live. I mean, that is the heat of the summer months. Now is really when you kind of know where you stand for the rest of the year. You know, are you that good? Are you off a little bit? If you're going to make some changes to step your game up for the last, you know, at, this is four races to go. You know, if you're going to make some changes, you probably need to make it now if you're gonna be in the hunt for the championship with three races left. Yeah, I, I agree. There's there's not much room for uh, mistakes if you're in front and you don't have a lot of opportunity to capitalize, right? You can't spend another race or two trying to try some things. You gotta bring your best shit out now and run the hell out of it. There's, there's no saving anything for the, the chase or anything like that. You have to go right now. Millbridge Speedway, July 7th. Then we uh -huh. have the road course in August. The intercourse. <laughs> I mean, the intercourse is August 16th. Then we go to the fair, September 6th, and it is fall final. Who's your fall final night, October 13th? This is going to be over faster than you think. I mean, these guys are going to get desperate. There's going to be some slamming around. Cannot wait to watch the rest of it, especially that July 7th race, the Bush Classic. The Carroll Tractor and Trailer Repair Bush Classic. Guys, I want to thank you for joining us again and another great night of DNQ racing. I look forward to the next one. Yeah, pleasure as always, Bob. And uh, I'll be bringing some extra Bush lattes to announce in a couple weeks here. <laughs> yeah, thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to the fans coming out and watching the race. And thanks to all you viewers at home. Uh, we appreciate it. It's been fun. Can't wait to do the next one. All right, we'll see you guys July 7th, and Bill is going to drink a lot of the Victory Lane beer before you get to it, so don't be surprised if you win and you're missing a couple cans <laughs> from it. We'll see you guys at the next race.